Hey everyone. So I went to see X-Men Dark Phoenix when it was released. Now I was going to make an analysis of the film, but I've had quite a few internet problems recently. Anyhow, the movie has really stayed with me. So here is a rather cold post-mortem post of the film. The movie actually did very poorly in cinemas. Dark Phoenix is the biggest flop. It's a bigger flop than the Fantastic Four reboot, apparently. So, didn't do very well commercially. And I think that's partly down to the advertising. The actual, like, look of the movie was kind of very dark. It wasn't very sort of visually appealing, you know. I, and um, I think the trailer probably put a lot of people off, you know. The sort of misandry that kind of came across from the trailer. I, I don't think it sold any movies, you know. And most science fiction fans are men. There are plenty of women who love science fiction too. But, you know, when you're kind of going to alienate most of your audience from the get-go, well, it is just not a very good marketing strategy, which is one of the reasons why I don't think he did so well. So X-Men Dark Phoenix had multiple reshoots and rewrites, and it upset a lot of fans before it even came out. So what went wrong? Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie and you kind of want to, then, you know, you might want to, you know, turn off the movie, I, I guess. Though, I, I suspect everyone who wants to see it has probably seen it already. Still, it was a very strange film. The movie starts out okay. The young Jean, Jean Grey, is sitting in the back of a car with her parents. She's changing the radio with her mind. Uh, she loses control of her powers and ends up crashing the car killing her mother, although we're kind of told that maybe it's her mother and her father at the beginning. So the film already disappoints me. The opening was really rushed. They could have put in some more nostalgic backstory here. Um, really, there's only about maybe 45 seconds of footage here. Um, so again, they kind of missed an opportunity to do something interesting here. Later, Charles Xavier meets young Jean at the hospital, um, says her parents are dead. And so the movie kind of starts, you know, you get all the introduction, all the title and things like, as far as I remember anyway. Um, fast forward a decade or two, and the X-Men, or X-People, as we're going to sort of explore later in the movie, must go into space to see, to save some NASA astronauts from a strange space-dwelling force. Well, naturally, the X-Men have got better technology than NASA, you know, it was kind of mean of them not to share they're amazing technology, I guess, but uh, I, I guess they just don't care about space exploration. <laughs> anyway, Nightcrawler teleports the crew back to the X-Men X-Wing. However, the captain is still on, on the ship. So Jean and Nightcrawler teleport over to the ship, save the captain. However, Jean gets trapped on the NASA shuttle and absorbs a strange energy. Um, basically, they copied the story from Captain Marvel and hoped the audience wouldn't actually notice. Um, so Raven is kind of a pilot and Raven thinks that uh, it's too risky to send Jean over, over to the other ship because Jean could be hurt or whatever. So um, Professor Charles Xavier is listening in with his superpowers and kind of thinks they should go anyway. So um, Raven well, is pretty pissed off, understandably, I, I guess. But... Uh, Raven says, So what? We wear matching costumes and smile at pictures to make everyone feel safe? Later in the movie. You know, she's kind of mocking the um, original X-Men movie here, which I... All movies. And I don't think this is um, a very wise approach, you know. I don't think the audience, who clearly like X-Men, uh, if they're an X-Men movie, really hated the original X-Men movies. You know, they've probably got fond memories of them. So, you know, I, I don't understand why they would really attack the earlier movies. Um, I mean, I guess the audience could say, wow, she's so woke and, and everything, you know, a movie referencing its, itself and how stupid it is. You know, we, we want dis to spend our disbelief, you know. We don't really want to have characters in a movie telling us that previous movies that they were in suck because, well, why would we want that? Anyway, I digress. Um... I hated this line, as I've already said. Um, it reminded me of the destruction of Luke Skywalker and the um, burning of the Jedi religion. 
Um, I can't quite remember what movie that was from. I think it was The First Jedi, but they completely destroyed Luke Skywalker, you know? They made him look like a jerk. Didn't Luke Skywalker try to kill some children or something? Um, well, I mean, I haven't seen the movie for a while, but the point is they, com they completely damaged a lot of the earlier Sky Star Wars movies. You know, which people loved. They loved watching, you know, Luke Skywalker and The Force and, and all of those movies. And so for the newer movies to kind of attack the older movies, I, I don't know, it just doesn't really feel right to me. But of course, I know why they're doing it and we're going to make... A, gonna explore that later on the movie makers don't respect the source material and just left me feeling disappointed in the movie this again was sort of referencing the sort of uniform speech that they had so back on earth raven who's like an annoying underpowered mystique starts lecturing charles about how awful he is for his good pr work improving the reputation of millions of mutants around the world charles says we're only one bad day away from them starting to see us as the enemy again. He's got a point here, but the film makes it sound like he's in the wrong, you know? I mean, this was a bit of a longer conversation they were having, but yeah, Charles is definitely the bad guy in this movie, and I will explore why. A raven, who I barely know or care about, is attacking one of the most beloved characters in the original X-Men, Charles Xavier. A character played by the most loved man in science fiction, arguably, Patrick Stewart. Although maybe you think it, or Jim Kirk, well, although it is actually Patrick Stewart. But Patrick Stewart really made Star Trek The Next Generation what it was. So obviously the role's sort of been taken over, but nevertheless, Charles Xavier was um, a huge part of the original X-Men. Um, the role's now played by James Mc McAvoy. So Raven lectures Charles stating that they should not be risking our lives to save bears. In this case, she's referring to humans and the mutants. Raven sounds like she's some kind of mutant supremacist here, but she's presented as the good person, naturally. And this, I suppose, was a callback to earlier films when they actually had, you know, um, a kind of dispute that they were kind of talking about, um, which I guess could be an allegory for different kinds of disputes. Nevertheless, Raven says, it's funny. I can't remember the last time you were the one risking something. For a start, he's in a wheelchair, so space missions may be a bit difficult for him. Um, he's the headmaster of a school that he built for mutants, right? And he's diplomat for all mutants. He's in contact with the President of the United States. It seems like he's doing plenty um, for mutant kind here. So this idea that he's just not taking any risks and he's just... I don't know, being lazy, I mean, it's it's kind of um a bit strange. So, by the way, the women are always saving the men around here. You may want to change the name to X-Women. Now, this was actually in the trailer, and I think this is one of the reasons why the movie didn't do so well, because it's kind of a bit misandrist in a way, and it's not even accurate. Um, for a start, this is sort of... Um, if this is the great feminist message of a movie, it kind of sucks. Because if you actually look at the um, crew who went up to save the astronauts, it was roughly 50% men, 50% women. They all kind of contributed here. Um, I guess you could say Raven's kind of angry, but still, this was um, something that they took a lot of pride in adding. So much so that they put it in the trailer, for goodness sake. Yeah, Jean almost died, it's true. Um, so Raven has no right to speak for her and deny her agency. So if we're going to talk about feminist politics, Raven shouldn't really be speaking for another woman, right? But taking away her agency effectively, like I said. I want to make um, a broader point here. When she uh, talks about maybe we should call it the ex-women, um, mankind generally referred to men and women for a long time, but I guess that language is too inclusive. The ex-men have always had powerful men and women in starring roles. But I guess it's considered woke to demonize cultural artifacts as racist. In this case, I'm referring to the cultural artifact that is X Men, right? It doesn't mean X males, it means generally X people. Um, you know what I mean? I mean, that's the meaning of the term, but I guess it's being redefined. Um, I think the line actually cost the movie millions. I've already kind of gone over that, I guess. But it kind of told the fans. Uh, fans of the X-Men and science fiction exactly what kind of movie this will be. 
it would be the kind of movie that attacks previous X-Men movies kind of implying there's something wrong with the title, perhaps they're sexist or something, which I completely don't think they are. I don't even think it even factored into the thought process. Um, so I referred to Star Trek already in Patrick Stewart, so I may as well go back to it. it things like Star Trek and Doctor Who, um, when cleverly written, can hold a mirror up to society and we can see the best and worst in ourselves and said society. Um, I actually think um, things like Doctor Who and Star Trek can do this very, very cleverly by not directly referencing something, but by kind of setting up an allegory, you know, setting up a similar sort of situation where you can kind of comment on, you know, social attitudes without actually um, talking about them directly. And I think this is actually incredibly powerful writing when it's done well. Dark Movie, uh, sorry, Dark Phoenix for Movie, didn't even have X-Men in the title. So they obviously decided that X-Men is now totally sexist and they shouldn't even have it in the title of the movie, which, you know, they didn't. If you look at the marketing materials, it just says Dark Phoenix. Like, you'd have to be an X-Men fan to actually understand what the Dark Phoenix was anyway. So this kind of seemed like a really stupid marketing strategy. Has the Overton window the number of topics that can be discussed in any kind of, in this case, in the movie, um, has it become so narrow that the film films made 10 years ago could not even be made today? Could you even call a movie X-Men? I mean, I guess you probably could, but clearly the people making this movie kind of think there's prob it's problematic to call a movie X-Men when you should maybe call it X-People or something ridiculous like that. Um, I really don't think the audience wants to be lectured about gender politics in their action science fiction movies. It does... Go, it goes without saying, the freer women are in society, the more successful that society is. However, it's not a zero-sum game. The success of anyone, male or female, benefits the whole of society. So this idea that we have to tear down one set of people in order to help another set of people, I, I don't agree at all. You know? It's not a zero-sum game. I thought to myself that the gender politics bit was over in the movie, but, oh boy, was I wrong. So Charles tried to use his ability to remove the memories of Jean killing her parents and doesn't tell Jean her dad's alive. Now this is kind of explained in the movie that the dad's really upset with Jean and doesn't want to see her anymore. So I think Charles is actually trying to do something that's good. Um, Charles Xavier, however, is basically set up... Um, his um, mind powers are kind of compared almost like rape in some of the dialogue, you know? And I'm just going to go over some of the dialogue here. So they're referring to Jean. So Professor Charles Xavier says, Her mutation has grown too powerful. For the first time, I can't penetrate her mind. Notice the word penetrate. I thought that was quite interesting, right? Because there's kind of like an ape allegory being built up here, you know? Charles Xavier has penetrated her mind. I mean, um, call me paranoid, but it kind of seems like this is a sort of an evil, wicked crime that, that he's sort of done. He's penetrated her mind. I mean, so Raven says, so that's what we're doing down here, right? And Professor Charles Xavier said, I built Cerebro to amplify my power. I think that's the only way I'm going to get inside her head now. Okay. Now, I could be reading too much into this, but inside her head, you know, um, penetrate um, a woman, um, you know, he's, he's kind of being set up as kind of an evil person here. So the audience meant to boo and hiss, I guess. Um, the mind of a psychic is a fragile thing, says Charles Xavier. It takes only the slightest tap to take it in the wrong direction. I had to make adjustments to her mind when she was young. And Raven says, what kind of adjustments? This is a very kind of um, accusing phrase, you know. She's suggesting, what did you do to her, you know? Um, so, of course, um, Charles replies, scaffolding walls around um, to keep out all the trauma. And it's interesting, right? He's talking about walls here. You know, this sort of evil man who we're sort of meant to hate is talking about building walls. Um, that sort of sounds like something Trump might talk about. Um, so Raven says, what did you do to her, Charles? What did you do to her? 
Um, and Charles replies, I saved her. I think that's... I think that whatever happened in space did something to her. In the process, these walls that I erected are being torn down. So again, erected. This is kind of phallic language right here. Um, building walls, you know, it's... So clearly he's meant to be the bad guy um, and he really is portrayed as the bad guy in the movie I'm not just making this up um, so Charles continues she's all desire all rage all pain it's and it's all coming out of her at once something's happening to her Raven she's changing Raven says into what Charles says I don't know again um, it kind of sounds like um, sort of me too movement where um, a lot of women are sort of screaming and yelling and expressing themselves and letting all the rage and the pain out. Um, again, I think this just is an allegory kind of in the United States. And I, I do actually think that, you know, this was deliberate, you know. I mean, most of the um, movie is actually pretty badly written. So this is the only kind of thing that's vaguely interesting in the movie, um, I guess, script wise, because I've reread the script and honestly, it's pretty terrible. But, um, of course, the character starts hounding him about, um, starts trying to get Charles to apologise for his, you know, mind rape. And I'm, I'm going to explore this later because the dialogue does actually say he's, he's a terrible person. So, yeah, Charles has always been sort of patriarchal father figure of the X-Men. So, you know, tearing him down, getting him to apologise for the evil things he's done, um, he really is the bad guy in this movie. Um, and when you consider that there's genocidal planet destroying aliens who want to exterminate the human race, it's kind of interesting that Charles Xavier is the bad guy. So Jean is never really punished for murdering Raven. Okay, later um, Jean kind of flies off, kills Raven. Um, Raven was trying to help her. Um, so the mutant student in the um, in Charles's academy said, "Is it true Jean killed her?" And Scott Summers um, said she didn't know what she was doing. Jean lost control. But she's still Jean. She's still our friend. We can still help her. We can find her. We can bring her home. That's what we're going to do to her, okay? Let's use a feminist lens, right? Abolitionist feminism advocates that women should be treated more um, leniently when they commit the same crime as a man even avoiding prison altogether. So, so much for equality, but that's kind of the message this movie has. Jean is never actually punished um, in the movie for murdering Raven. You know, she's actually kind of forgiven by the characters. Um, remember, Charles is the bad guy. Um, so let's go over some of the dialogue that Charles has to suffer. Um, so this is coming from Hank, who, you know, I hate what they did to Hank. In the original X-Men, right? Hank was this amazing, like, politician, right? And he looked completely different. He was this massive blue hairy guy, right? But he was, um, like, he was in Washington. He was a politician. He was actually fighting for, like, mutant rights. And I just thought he was sort of a wonderful allegory for um, people who might be different, you know, in any sort of way, going into politics and actually standing up for the sort of communities they represent, you know? I thought he was smart and clever and I really liked the character, but now he's kind of like this annoying whiny guy. And he says, this is your fault, Charles. This is your fault that she's dead. He's referring to Jean here, who was actually killed by Raven, but it's now Charles's fault, of course. Charles replies, come on, that's not fair. And Hank says, fair? Oh, don't talk about fair. You messed with the mind of an eight-year-old girl. And Charles says, Jean, you pushed out all the pain and anger. Where did you think it was going to go? And Charles replies, I did that to help her. What what I do, what I do to help all of you. Um, so then Hank replies, oh, please, come on, please. You still can't see what you did. And Charles kind of decides to calm him down. Come on, let's just... No! You need to face this, Charles! You need to face it! Come on! Admit it to me! Right now! Come on! Admit it! Um, and Hank kind of continues, Charles, just admit you are wrong, please! Again, this kind of reminded me of the Brent Kavanaugh case in the United States. So, you know, um, 
we've got Hank pleading with Charles to kind of apologise even though Charles doesn't think he did anything wrong they're still sort of pleading with him come on apologise you've got to apologise come on um, yeah so anyway in America Brent Kavanaugh was appointed um, to the Supreme Court in the United States by Trump some Americans worried that he that the Republicans would have a majority and they could overturn Roe versus Wade um, a legal case that protects women's right to have an abortion in the United States. Um, several women made allegations about Brent Kavanaugh when he was younger, um, 30 odd years ago. Um, they and the media demanded he apologise and stepped out from his role. He was hounded by the media, driven to tears and exhaustion. It turned out there was no evidence to support these allegations, but still, most of the American media turned his life into a living hell for a few weeks and some people said he still should step down simply because of the unproven accusations. I personally think the Democrats absolutely could have legitimately opposed Kavanaugh's appointment um, and they might have had good reason to but I don't think the way that they did it was very honourable or particularly good. Um, obviously in the end he was found innocent of all crimes um so <clears throat> moving on I, I kind of again saw an allegory with american society you know this guy who sort of used his mind rapey powers um it's kind of being demand well they're demanding that he apologize even though he doesn't think he did anything wrong of course charles apologizes in the end for penetration of her mind um coming back to the actual words that the script used the ex people chase her back down um to her hometown um, Jean ends up murdering Raven. Now there's a lot of links in the story between Raven's power and her emotions. And I'll come back to this at the end of the, at the end of the movie. Now a lot of the X-Men actually have their powers reduced in this movie, which again kind of annoyed me because you know you, I don't know, it's it's kind of never very satisfying when you diminish a character's powers just to make it more convenient. But anyway, after murdering um, Raven, Jean flies off to visit Magneto. Um, she's covered in Raven's blood, and Magneto obviously sort of says, who did you kill? Apparently Magneto had some kind of relationship with Raven. Um, now, Raven really annoyed me, right? I haven't watched all of the previous movies, but I've seen some of them. The annoying thing is Mystique was such a fantastic character. Mystique was actually my favourite character in the original X-Men. She was the ultimate spy. She was a phenomenal gymnast. You know, she could... Um, impersonate almost anyone perfectly. She was incredibly smart. Um, Mystique looked incredible. You know, the makeup was amazing. You know, they even used her on the front cover. She was just, you know, a fantastic character and awesome generally. Um, I must admit, it's been a while since I watched the X Men reboots, but Raven seems like a sort of whiny teenage Teen Titans character. And look, I'm not a fan of the Teen Titans, I've never really watched it, but she just kind of seems like. Uh, you know, she should be arguing with um, Robin or, or something about her hair or something. I, I don't know, I never really liked the character. And considering Mystique was my favourite character in the originals, I kind of think it's a shame that they diminished her character so much. Um, okay, I, I know they are meant to be the same character, Raven and Mystique, but the differences are so huge um, just in the movie. I, I don't know, I just just kind of felt a bit let down really. In fact, to be honest, during the movie I didn't even know if they were the same character or whether Mystique was going to come in later and she would be so much more awesome. Of course, when Mystique um, dies and Magneto's very upset, I kind of don't really understand that because I've never actually seen the two really interacting much. And anyway, Raven was on the side of Charles Xavier and, you know, the sort of good X-Men. So it doesn't make much sense to me. Um, so yeah, Anyway, later in the movie, Charles is physically tortured by Jean for his mind penetration. Fair words, not mine. Um, so the wheelchair-bound professor is brutally dragged up the stairs by Jean's power, which looks very, very painful. You know, he's made to physically suffer for what he did. Um, I wonder what kind of message the movie was sending here. I don't know, this movie doesn't seem like it's um, a very happy movie. It kind of seems like it's made by people who are sort of really angry and upset with the world. It doesn't really seem like a particularly fun movie or a good movie. There's no humour in the movie as far as I remember whatsoever. You know, it's just kind of cold and 
horrible and just not good generally but okay that's not really a professional review i guess but in the end gene forgives charles you know charles apologizes um gene realizes that her emotions her emotions make her strong um the main villain of the piece well apart from charles there's another villain actually who's one of the genocidal maniacs who want to exterminate the entire human race um she sort of says hey gene your emotions make you weak and Jean replies, no, my, emotion, uh, my emotions make me strong. Despite the fact her uh, uncontrolled emotions killed Raven. But I guess we're just going to ignore that now. Um, I hate the script. I swear it was written in simplified English. I imagine the original script was okay. But then they let Donald Trump's speechwriter rewrite it. And it took out all the words longer than three syllables. Honestly, like... I was just hearing this dialogue, which could have been, you know, written by children. I And it was just noticeably awful. So I, I don't know, maybe they thought, well, Donald Trump uses really simple language. And I guess Americans like really simple language. I don't personally think they do. But, you know, this movie was just horrendous in that regard. Um, so this analysis has gone on for a very long time. Um, I'm not surprised the movie flopped. People want to go to the cinema to see... To have an epic time and to see something incredible i see a lot of very woke movies coming out of hollywood and many of them do very badly there's still some very good movies um out there my advice to hollywood is focus on making great movies and people will enjoy um enjoy them just kind of leave out the social engineering stuff you know it doesn't work the fans don't like it the fans don't want to be told that they're horrible the fans don't want to be told that men are terrible people they don't want a sort of rerun of democrat politics honestly they don't want like propaganda shoved down their throat they just want to go and they want to see a really cool funny interesting wonderful movie and i just don't think this movie was particularly awesome or wonderful i think it alienated the audience from the get-go i think the trailer a trailer upset people um they didn't even use the name of the movie in the movie title i mean they just ran with dark phoenix they didn't even have x-men in there in the end honestly i wanted to get this off my chest for a long time i don't know why but the movie just kind of annoyed me in some ways thanks for listening and uh yeah goodbye